I'm excited to hear uh, what is happening. They, they were able to be there for a few months, and then now they're home, and they're getting ready to go back for a much longer time. And uh, so we get to hear from them this morning, so will you please welcome them? Hey guys, good morning. It's good to see you all here, and we're just really blessed that we had a great turnout, and we get to see church family and friends and family and people from Traverse City that we've worked with and people from 2019 that went on the Guatemala vision trip with us that have come down with us to pray over the plane. And we're just really blessed to have you guys here. And Richard's going to kind of start us off. Yeah, I just love being with you guys this morning, especially this time of year where we can have our focus really shifted back to what really matters, and that's Jesus Christ. And through everything that we share with you this morning, I hope that really shines through that the only reason that Nina and I are doing any of this is purely for him. And uh, yeah, so 2021, Nina and I uh, went full time with Paradise Bound Ministries, and uh, they work primarily in Guatemala. And uh, this year had a lot of training and a lot of traveling. So if we could get the next slide. This is not the slideshow that I know. <laughs> I think this is the wrong one. That's okay. We can still do it regardless. We have a lot to talk about. Okay. <laughs> so, They're yeah. mostly just pictures that we have that sent through an email. But if you want to start us up. Um, yeah. So basically, I was just going to start with the timeline of 2021 and kind of what we were up to this year. So basically, at the first of the year, like I said, we became full-time missionaries. And... Uh, we started off the year here in Owasso doing an online international, uh, intercultural course uh, with uh, Paradise Bound uh, partnering with uh, JARS and Wycliffe Bible Translators. And uh, yeah, basically that was the first two months of this year. It was an in-depth course where we could really dive into our own spiritual health and our time with God and then also learn how to best uh, minister to those of different cultures and see things through their point of view. And it was just an awesome time of growth personally and uh, I believe for our ministry as well. And right when that wrapped up uh, mid-February, we ended up traveling down to North Carolina where JARS is located. And they are a, a mission organization that does a lot of training for uh, many different things, but primarily why we went down there was for aviation. Uh, before that got started, though, we ended up jumping right into a four-wheel drive and motorcycle uh, training cl class, essentially, that just kind of went through. Hey, there we go. Awesome. Now I don't feel as flustered because I have something to look at. <laughs> okay. Kind of restart. Yeah. So basically, you can see up there a lot of words, but it boils down to a lot of training and, and uh, a lot of traveling. So after the four-wheel drive and motorcycle training, where Nina got to ride her first motorcycle, uh, we jumped right into the, uh, the orientation for aviation. Uh, that's going to be the flight program and also as a mechanic. Uh, that was 16 weeks of very intensive training on uh, a lot of short runways, grass runways, slopes, just uh, really preparing you for what we'll see overseas uh, in a lot of the uh, Smoky Mountain terrain, just flying through there, and yeah, it was a it was a great time of fellowship and learning and growth, and really got uh, well prepared for this coming years to come. Yeah, so my next slide kind of talks a little bit more about my personal experiences from the training. But if there was anything that I learned, which there was a lot, you can never have enough training, and the training that we did all came into play in Guatemala. Maybe there were things that we didn't even realize we were gonna encounter, we didn't even realize we were gonna see. But the training center that we went with, they knew. And so they knew what to minister to, you know, personally and spiritually, and even just very physical needs, like four-wheel drive training. I don't know about you guys, I had never had four-wheel drive experience. So I decided to do the training, and I'm so glad that I did. I think our first, no, our second day in country, it already came into play. We were using the training right off the bat, patching up tires because we got a flat because a big old rusty nail popped into the tire. And all right, I can do this. I can change a tire and it's fine. I helped out Richard and we know how to use jacks now. So if we get, you know, flat tires out in the middle of a village somewhere, we can take care of it. 
Um, and yeah, even just our driveway is four-wheel driving. <laughs> it's very different. The infrastructure is not you know, what you would expect here in the States. But I'm so glad that I got that training. I'm glad I got to learn how to ride a motorcycle. That will probably come into play later. Most people get around that way. Um, and I was just really blessed you know, as a wife of a pilot. There wasn't necessarily a, a curriculum for me when Richard was doing his flight training. So I had a lot of flexibility. Sometimes people were great with flexibility, other times they don't. So I really learned to rely on God to direct my steps at a very, very early start to this year. We had a wives meeting where someone came in and spoke to us about you know, spiritual direction. And it changed probably my, my spiritual practice from here on out for the absolute better just how to listen to God, how to communicate with him in a more personal setting. And my personal relationship with God developed and deepened so much from that time. I then, you know, after I surrendered over, you know, not working, God opens up a door and allows me to become an administrator. And so I got to work on the JARS campus doing administrative work. God is so good. And he really wanted to just get a hold of my heart first before doing any of that. So there, we have so many stories of God working throughout our lives, but Let's continue on to Richard's highlights, because he's got some cool ones, too. Yeah, so, I mean, it's just been an awesome year all, all around. Uh, it was a very intense year, especially with the training at JARS. But, uh, you know, it, we saw a lot of great growth there, and, um, you know, all the skills that we've learned and fine-tuned are really already coming into play. Uh, we were able to actually do a lot of work on the airplane that we'll be bringing to Guatemala. And if you guys join us after church, we'll even be able to put our hands on and pray over before we take it down to Guatemala. But that was a huge highlight is being able to work on that airplane and then also being able to take that airplane out to Utah and Colorado and do a lot of uh, mountain backcountry flying with it and just really kind of connect some dots that... Uh, were made from you know the training at JARS and then the time in this airplane and now being able to bring those back together and actually utilize the airplane in that way was awesome. Uh, other uh, highlights were the runway survey and charting class that we were able to take. Uh, Nina and I were both able to take that one and it's gonna definitely come into play next year and the years to come as we open up more runways in Guatemala to be able to utilize this tool of the airplane um, just getting to see what the ins and outs of, you know, taking a piece of land and really transforming that into a small runway as well. So those are definitely huge uh, highlights of the year. And uh, some of my other highlights are going to come uh, in the next slides when we go to Guatemala. Yeah, so eventually we did finish training <sighs> for now. And so we were blessed to be able to move down to Guatemala. So our next one kind of has some pictures of what life looks like. So we actually live on a piece of property that Paradise Bound is in the process of purchasing. It's property on a farm that has an airstrip, it has a hangar, and it has an apartment that's attached to it. So that's basically where we live. So when the airplane comes down, Richard's work is right there, out the door. It's fantastic. Um, the country itself is absolutely beautiful, but it brings a ton of challenges as well. Um, and even though there's a lot of hardship, there's a lot of difficulty there, we very intentionally choose to focus on the things that are positive, the things that are good, and the things that God is doing that we're grateful for. So, you know, we had to chop our grass with a machete one day, but we're not going to focus on that. It's okay. <laughs> there's a lot of fantastic things that God is doing. And uh, something that really struck me during the worship time today, and the worship was fantastic this morning. I really enjoyed it. But... Through that communion meditation, you know, the sacrifice of Jesus' son, he made a way for us to know him, to have salvation through him. And what we can see with this property and what God has in store is he is making a way right now, a way for people to come to know him. Because of the terrible infrastructure in Guatemala, it is very difficult to get to people that live outside of a city. And there are thousands of people that live in remote areas that are very hard to access. Without, you know, four-wheel drive vehicles, without planes, you can't get there. And people will not know the name of Jesus unless you're able to get there and tell them. So just a huge reminder that I had this morning of why we're even doing what we're doing in the first place. Obviously, we have fun stories from Guatemala, but 
the purpose, you know, still remains that we've had so much training and other things so that God can make this way. So our life in Guatemala, it's, it's beautiful, it's challenging, but it's what God has, you know, ordained for us, the vision he's given for us. And now we can talk a little bit more about the specific ministry that we're involved with because Paradise Bound has lots of different ministries and we've been able to plug into some certain ones. So Richard will do the next one. Yeah, so uh, on the next slide here, we've got some pictures of a few things that Nina and I have been able to be a part of, uh, just building those eternal relationships. Uh, the last three months that we were in Guatemala, a lot of the focus was on the staff themselves and just building those relationships. Uh, so we were able to do a lot of awesome things with the staff, uh, including uh, Monday morning devotions that take up the whole morning where we can just really dive into the Word together and pour into each other. and. Uh, just really let the spirit move there and uh, we from day one until the end of it I mean we saw a huge uh, relationship building it was just uh, pretty amazing even with my uh, lack of Spanish we we find a way to communicate and have some fun uh, especially myself and the guys in the auto shop so that's one of the aspects of the ministry is with Paradise Bound having 15 vans and trucks uh, we've got some full-time maintenance guys and I've been able to help them and you know uh, when you're working together with some guys that always, you don't necessarily need words, you know, just working side by side, helping each other out. That was an awesome time. And then probably my favorite time, though, was uh, working in uh, the Open Doors Orphanage as well. Uh, you can see a couple pictures of the kiddos up there. Uh, that was just such an awesome time to be able to pour into these kids. Nina will tell you a little bit more about the nannies uh, that just love these kids so much. but. Uh, you know, they're all females, and it was just awesome to see by bringing in a couple guys to, like, help out when the nannies aren't there, just how the kids respond, and, you know, they just need that male influence, so it was an awesome time just building relationships and, uh, yeah, just having some fun with the kids as well. Yeah, the kids love Richard. It's adorable. Um, so, yeah, that's just a beautiful thing to see him interact with them like that. Now, the way that Paradise Bounds Orphanage works is they have four nannies that work 48 hours and then they sh trade shifts with another four and then there's a full-time cook. Now those ladies, since they're working constantly, they can't necessarily leave the kids. They haven't been able to join the rest of the staff for their devotional time. And because COVID levels were higher in Guatemala, a lot of the churches shut down. So these ladies at the orphanage weren't able to go to their churches. You know, they were just working really hard, going home, coming back kind of a thing. And like that was their existence at that time, and one, I, I actually got to hear quite a few testimonies from them, but one girl basically said that she had been praying and praying to know God more, and just not sure how to do that necessarily. She was so busy all the time. So this was something that Paradise Bound had in mind, and having a background in teaching, they wanted me to come in and teach a Bible study with the ladies. So we organized it so that Richard and other helpers at the organization would go downstairs, they would take care of the kids, and then the ladies from the orphanage would come up and we could spend a few hours in worship and prayer and in Bible study. And the time that we got to spend together was amazing. Just as far as seeing the growth that happened there, the testimonies that came from the time, these ladies were hungry and they were waiting for the word of God. And once they received it, they grabbed it just quickly and went with open hands excited for it. And some of them did share testimonies with me about how God worked in their hearts and worked in their lives through the time. One in particular basically said that she loved doing her homework, which is great, right? You love doing your homework. What great students I have down there. But she loved doing her homework and found herself doing it for hours and hours and then realized she had a passion for it and that she wanted to go into ministry as well because of how much she loved getting into God's word. And there was another person that had someone that she had wronged in her life and realized she needed forgiveness and the story of forgiveness that came from it. So God's word is powerful in its effect. When you give it to someone and they're ready to receive it, it changes lives. And it's definitely been changing lives there. And so I'm excited to continue to go back and continue these studies. I've got different ones lined up for next year just to see how God is going to work in people's lives. Because in this short period of time, he worked a lot in this group of ladies. And I know he's not done with them yet. He's just getting started. So that was definitely one of my big highlights from building relationships down there. And just for anyone that doesn't know, I do have a background um, 
as a Spanish teacher. So I'm already fluent in Spanish, so I got to jump right into teaching. That's an awesome way that God has already like prepared me in advance to then come and do this work. So that's pretty cool too. Yeah, so on the next slide, I think we'll talk about yeah, the outreach in the villages. So continuing to build those relationships in the villages as well. So Nina and I were able to go into about 10 different villages while we were there over the three months and uh, be a part of a couple different ministries and outreaches through that. One of them is the Daily Bread program. Uh, because of COVID and the hard shutdowns, people were actually running out of food and uh, they were essentially starving to death. So we started a new program where we bring food and medicine and a pastor that will preach the word to them and share the good news. And through that program, Paradise Bound has actually extended their reach tremendously. Uh, before COVID, we were in 16 different villages and now throughout COVID, uh, we are actually in over 30 villages, and that's all because they've heard what uh, the neighboring village is experiencing and the, the growth that they're going through and just how much better life is once they know the good news of Jesus and uh, they're inviting us in and, you know, we're going further and further and uh, building new relationships and we've been able to meet so many different people throughout the villages and build some awesome relationships, excuse me, with uh, the pastors as well uh, by doing this outreach. Um, I guess just a little background, uh, a couple of the pastors that we've been bouncing around in the back of these four-wheel trucks with uh, pretty much told us that they would never get into an airplane. They were just terrified of it, and uh, that kind of makes my job a little more difficult. <laughs> so, you know, we were praying a lot about that, and we knew that God ordained this. He's been wanting to utilize this kind of tool. So. We just, you know, we didn't pressure anyone or say anything about it. We just kind of spent the time with them, and we went into these villages getting rocked around in these vans and trucks for hours upon hours, and uh, I think they saw that we just really want to be a part of the team and that we're really there uh, to be missionaries, to just spread the good news of Jesus. And when they saw that the Holy Spirit was working through us, in these villages with them, uh, they realized that it was from God as well. And then they, near the end, one pastor in particular, the senior pastor that's been with Paris Bound for over 20 years, uh, at, I think the last time we went to a village, in one day he asked me three different times, when is that airplane getting down here? <laughs> and he just realizes that it's going to allow him to go further, spend more time in the villages, and it'll just be a lot easier on him as well because he's not getting any younger. <laughs> so yeah, it was an awesome time going into the villages, both with the staff and then with a lot of the people that we were able to help and minister to. Yes, uh, building relationships and spending time building relationships bears fruit down the road. So we can already kind of see a little glimpse of that because uh, it's certainly putting in the time now is going to make Richard's job easier in the future. And when mission teams, like with all of you guys, come down and we work together with the Guatemalan staff, we'll already have a lot of those relationships built that you get to come in and enjoy with us. So that's exciting. And we are looking long-term with this as well. You know, what's going to benefit ministry and God's work down the road as well. So our next slide is a fun one because while all of these things have been going on in Guatemala, God has been working up here in Michigan as well in a way that I don't think a lot of people might associate ministry work with, you know, turning wrenches and doing maintenance on vehicles and uh, welding and all these other things that are going to be used to further God's kingdom. Um, we found out when we came back home, we helped, my dad actually helped us purchase a vehicle when we were in country so that we could bring it down to Guatemala for next year, but it needed some work done to it. Um, and after getting it home, we realized even more work needed to get done. So he enlisted the help of people from the church. I did not know this at the time necessarily, but how many of you guys stepped up to the plate and came out and helped? I mean, you can already recognize some faces right there from the pictures pretty quickly. Um, but that, when we heard about that and we saw those pictures, we were just floored. That is absolutely amazing that people you know, volunteered their time and their skills 
in that way to bless this ministry and then to bless our lives with safety down the road too. That was fantastic and kind of looked like they had a little bit of fun. I don't know, maybe at the same time. But yeah, so uh, part of the afternoon that we want to incorporate as well is actually a time of prayer over the vehicle too. All these modes of transportation are so important. The plane is and our vehicle will be too that we can just get home safely every night. So we will also have some time to put our hands on the vehicle. You get to see it. It's almost done. So close. It's basically done. But you can put your hands on it and pray for the vehicle as well that it will also get transported down to Guatemala safely and that it'll just keep us safe when we are there. So this was a great blessing that I wanted to share with the congregation and give our thanks to everyone that helped out as well too. Oh, uh, the name that's, that's Tommy's nickname. That is a Tommy name of the vehicle. That's kind of fun actually. All the other vehicles have like macho names. I'm like, oh, this is Lil Chica. <laughs> but it's not, and you'll see it's actually quite not that way at all. It's kind of a play on words, but anyway. All right, so on the next slide. All right, looking forward to the next year. So yeah, we've got a lot of different things going on um, in preparation for 2022, and then a lot of things that we've been praying through um, that we're trying to either implement or that we're looking forward to as we go. So um, Nina and I are both essentially starting new programs with Paradise Bound for myself, obviously the aviation program. And then Nina is gonna be starting a VBS program where she brings uh, work teams from the US down and go into remote villages and uh, actually minister to the little ones through a VBS, Vacation Bible School program. Uh, and we're both extremely excited to see what God has in store for both of those. Uh, but you know, prayer is always needed through all of those as well, especially with COVID going on still and it's hitting nice. Guatemala pretty hard right now. So just prayers for uh, the numbers to go down so then we can actually bring you guys, teams from the U.S. down to really uh, just minister to not only the adults, but now uh, fortunately the little ones as well. So uh, yeah, we've got a few of those prayers and then also just bring the airplane down to Guatemala. Uh, that's gonna pose a little bit of a challenge, but next month we're hoping to bring that all the way down. Uh, so it'll be my first international flight, should be interesting, oh, but okay. uh, yeah, it'll be great. And anything else you want to touch on there, Nina? Yeah, we have some very lofty goals for next year that will, like Richard said, require a lot of prayer over those. And so we do appreciate all the prayers that we've received from you guys. Um, and just for continued ones, uh, we still are raising a little bit of support. Um, we have to figure out some logistics with transporting things. And all those new programs will continually need prayer over them constantly because we've noticed from a very early on point that if something is covered in prayer, you can see God work through it because it's clearly him that's doing the work as opposed to us. And that makes a huge difference. So we keep ourselves connected in prayer to the Lord. Um, health is an interesting thing too. I found that it was like a whole new pool of germs that I've been around and I've, I've been sick a lot. So prayers for health are really important. And you know, Richard and I got pretty sick when we were down there, but when people started praying, I really did notice a difference. I did, so I appreciated that very much and always continued prayers that God would work through us to teach and equip his people for his ministry. Yep, and I think that pretty much covers looking forward to next year and prayer support that we'll still need. So we can go to our final one and kind of wrap up. All right, yeah, so uh, if you're not already part of our newsletter uh, email list, uh, please either sign up this uh, afternoon in the fellowship hall. We have a little list that you can sign up on, yep. or you can send an email to nina at paradisebound.org, and then we can get you on that list, and we'll be sending those out uh, frequently, so then you can kind of stay up to date with what we're up to in Guatemala, what God's doing, and just the different ways that he's been moving. So that's an awesome way to stay connected. Also, uh, the DeVries Family Ministry page on Facebook uh, we'll be giving updates there, and hopefully I'll be posting some videos uh, of some flights uh, soon as well. So that'll be a fun thing to kind of see how God's working through that. Uh, and then finally, the if you would like to donate uh, for our support, you can also go to richandnina.com 
and then you can choose under the fund heading missionary support fund and then select our names but uh, even more than that I mean please just uh, if you could just take the time to pray I mean we know that God will provide the finances one way or another we're not worried about that but we really need each and every one of you to take some time and really pray through uh, this ministry and just all the people that will be reaching through the Jeep or the airplane or even the VBS program and just so many other things that Paradise Bound has got going on right now. Uh, prayer is huge and one of the quotes that uh, Paradise Bound really holds close is one by Oswald Chambers and that is uh, that prayer does not prepare you for the greater work, prayer is the greater work. And we live by that, and we really need that more than anything. Yeah, so thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to what God has been up to in Guatemala and in our lives and what he's still going to continue to do in the years to come. He's not done. He's just getting started. So it's excited that you guys are all a part of that, and you get to see it firsthand and be a part of it too. So thank you very much. So that's Richard and Nina, and can I just say that, that we are so proud of you. Um, we are proud to be a part of your ministry in the small ways that we can be here in Michigan, and um, we're, we just love it when you're back so we can hear about it, but um, thank you for going and representing us, but most importantly, for representing Jesus in Guatemala. Thank you.